technology is changing really fast and the habits of people are changing really fast and one of the things we have to realize is can we keep up Facebook is now passé it's old but for many people who are not that young Facebook is something that either they don't use or look at or even get involved in my daughter has said to me and my wife don't go on Facebook you're too old well Facebook is a connection site it connects people and yet you have to know people in order to sort of be connected then you have Twitter now Twitter I know is an American uh, thing and it's not that well used in the world but this is of course an evolution here you're sending really text messaging which is a short SMS almost all the time saying I'm in a seminar I'm bored I'm this I'm eating cake almost all the time you're sending a very very short message out and this is what all the younger people are doing and even the people who are supposedly now involved in the world and know what's going on all the celebrities have Twitter sites etc okay this is again the evolution of it now of course we're going to talk about marketing in this uh, seminar that's what we're doing but this is an introduction and we're going to go connected a little bit later to marketing oh I love you come on okay I asked if we are global and connected the other way of looking at it is we are local and disconnected statistically in the year 1950 the average person in the world was born and died within a radius of 50 miles that means in 1950 if you were born in Bangkok you probably were going to die someplace close to Bangkok that means that the average person didn't move very much well if you look at the statistics for today they are exactly the same the average person today is born and dies within a radius of about 50 miles that means today if you're born in Bangkok you'll probably die close to Bangkok now we also look at some other stats six percent of the telephone calls made in the US every day are international ones that's not very much the US is one of the countries who has the most international students but only seven percent that's also not very much I travel all the time I've lectured I think in 18 different countries I mentioned how many miles I flew last year I have one sister she's older she lives in the US she's never left the US she doesn't have a passport she never takes a plane so she cancels me out there are more people like her than like me most people today are not really global at best they're regional at best and are they connected well again most of us have one way of looking at the world and that's not really doesn't help to, to be global because global means when you talk you don't use the word we like we Americans and we Australians and we Thai but you really go across borders you connect and you look at the similarities rather than the differences there's one other thing which really says we're not at all connected and global and that is language global is English at this moment in the future it may be Chinese but today it's English and that leaves a lot of people out of it some years ago I was in Hanoi and I was working there for three months at the university and one day I was walking through a shopping mall only because they had the best air conditioning in Hanoi and it's hot there so I was walking through the shopping mall and a guy a man came up to me a Western guy 
And he asked me in Spanish if I spoke Spanish. Well, I do speak Spanish because I lived in South America. But I said, this is strange. So I answered him in Spanish, yes, I speak it. He asked me again in Spanish if I would help him take money from the ATM machine. You know, the machine where it gives you cash after you put your credit card in. And I said to myself, oh, this is strange. Because this must be like a scam, like a trick to, to get me to use my credit card so he can... Okay. But, no, not really. It was completely correct. What happened was, this was a man from Spain... And he explained to me that he was vacationing in Vietnam with his girlfriend, both from Spain. And they traveled around for two weeks, and they were on their way back to the airport to go home, and the taxi hit a truck. Well, if you've ever been to Vietnam, you know they drive crazy, even worse than in, in Thailand. And so his girlfriend was in the hospital in sort of bad condition, and he showed me himself, his arm was like messed up, but he wasn't too bad hurt. He didn't speak English. The girlfriend spoke English. He was stuck. He couldn't take money out of the ATM machine because the instructions were either in Vietnamese or in English. And he didn't understand either one. So I helped him take money out of the machine and he was very happy. And he said the Spanish embassy helped him a little bit but not really. He was stuck. He went to see his girlfriend every day in the hospital but he couldn't communicate. There is a saying which says, the limits of your language are the limits of the world. And for most people, that's true. Most people don't want to go someplace where they can't communicate. That's why people who come to Thailand don't go around and take local transportation and go and get lost. They stay in the hotels and they eat in the hotels. <gasps> it's safe. Okay. But still, most of the world is not English. Number one language, Mandarin. How about Spanish? How about French? How about German? There are over 3,000 spoken languages in the world. Wow. So if you are lucky enough to know English and to speak English, like me, you can go everywhere. But other people who don't have really a hard time. And this, of course, says then, really, are we global? Are we connected? Disconnected. Okay. Hoard means to keep. Some people share information. Most people don't. Knowledge is power. I know. You don't know. Too bad. Hmm. How many people in a company readily share information? Well, I know I work for a university. The university I work for in France, I work for the business school. The people in the business school don't like the people in the other parts of the university. This is normal. Every university that I know, there's very little communication between one department and one faculty and another. Same thing in a company. The people in the marketing department don't like the people in the accounts department and don't like the HR people. <gasps> oh my God. And that's the same company. Well, in effect, if you cannot communicate well within your own company, then how do we do integrated marketing communications within different cultures and in different places? This goes against, to a degree, human nature. Government agencies also, same thing. They are just, if you look at the, the world today, they had an instance of uh, the guy on the plane at Christmas who uh, wanted to blow up the plane going into Detroit. And of course, uh, the U.S. government is blaming all of the different agencies. The CIA didn't tell the Homeland Security, who didn't talk to the other, and they did, had the information and they didn't share it. Why? Well, because we don't work well together. We're jealous and we don't like the others. <gasps> wow. Okay. Well, you have that in every place, in every university, in every company. <sighs> and that says we're not really connected. You can have the perfect email system. You can be wired. You can have it all high.